Looking at the best selling PC parts on Amazon, there are just so many mistakes. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. It's time to look at PC parts to avoid in 2026, including a shocking list of best selling graphics cards, CPUs, and SSDs. Not to mention all the crazy RAM mistakes that you can make right now. Whether you're looking to build a PC in 2026 or upgrade a PC in 2026, we are gonna help you avoid these common mistakes. If you get value at this video, please give it a like, and of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by VIP SCD Key. Say goodbye to crazy expensive Windows licenses and that terrible activate Windows watermark. Right now, use the links in the video description, head over to VIP SCD Key and get a Windows 11 OEM license for a great price. Pick your product license, then use the PC Builder discount code PC25 for an additional 30% off. Go to the activation settings on your PC, put in the code and boom, Windows is fully licensed for a crazy low price. And they have Microsoft Office licenses too. Use the links in the video description. All right, let's talk about the absolute worst graphics cards in 2026 that you should avoid. In 2026, I would have thought that most gamers have gotten the message, but a quick look at the best selling graphics cards on Amazon shows that four out of the top 10 have eight gigabytes or less of VRAM in 2026. And yes, I ignored the GPU bracket because it's not actually a GPU. Ever since the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S came out in late 2020, eight gigabyte GPUs were basically cooked. That's because those consoles can utilize more than eight gigabytes in their unified system RAM for their VRAM. And because console game sales are about half of the gaming market with PC being the other half, there just is not much incentive for game developers to optimize for older PC hardware with eight gigabytes or less of VRAM. So while a brand new RTX 5050, RTX 5060, or RTX 5060 Ti, or even RX 9060 XT with eight gigabytes of VRAM, it might be fine for many older games. These GPUs already cannot run several titles at higher ultra details, even at 1080p. They're aging like milk going forward. The worst part is that it might be impacting your gameplay right now, and you may not even know it. Games used to stutter badly or just crash. Then gamers got mad at the game developers and blamed them rather than upgrading their aging graphics card. So many games now just don't load textures when they run out of VRAM. The game doesn't stutter, but it looks terrible and muddy, even though your FPS counter remains high, but it reduces bad Steam reviews. In 2026, I recommend at least 10 gigabytes of VRAM for 1080p higher ultra details, 12 gigabytes of VRAM minimum for higher ultra gaming at 1440p, and 16 gigabytes of VRAM for high level ray tracing at 1440p or 4K rasterized gaming. Unfortunately, with the global RAM shortage, we'll talk about that in just a second. Graphics cards with more than eight gigabytes of VRAM, they're going up in price. Now, my top picks have been the RX 9060 XT 16 gigabyte and the RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte. Or for more budget gamers, you can often pick up the ARC B580 12 gigabyte for about $240. Another one of those Amazon best-selling graphics cards is the RX 7900 XT for nearly $600 US. Now, this is the graphics card that I'm using right now in the PC behind me. And it's a fantastic GPU with 20 gigabytes of VRAM and capable of playing all the latest titles at 1440p with crazy high FPS or good FPS at 4K. So why should you avoid it? At least at the time of filming, you can pick up an RX 9070 16 gigabyte for about $520 or an RX 9070 XT 16 gigabyte for about $620. The 9070, it's about as fast as the 7900 XT and it's FSR 4 upscaling, which is way better than the older FSR 3, which is currently what the 7900 XT has available especially at 1440p. The 9070 XT, it's way faster for not much more money and also has FSR 4. But I still keep seeing people buying the older 7900 XT for more money than the newer and better GPUs. Of course, we do expect AMD to eventually roll out a version of FSR 4 to the 7000 series, but again, it isn't available at the time of filming and you're leaving a lot of FPS on the table for this older graphics card. And the same goes for the RX 7900 XTX, which I see people buying for hundreds more than a 9070 XT, which is almost as fast. And again, it's got FSR 4. If you get a deal on an older GPU, that's great, but don't overpay for inferior products. The number two PC part to avoid in 2026, it's not a CPU, it's RAM, with prices quadrupling in just a couple months at the end of 2025. That's because AI data centers are eating all the RAM and SSDs. And because the AI tech bros, they've got trillions to spend, they're willing to pay much higher prices than regular consumers like you and me. And sees crazy high prices. The good news in early 2026 is that PC RAM prices, they're not on a rocket ship to the moon anymore. 
for at least the time being, they seem to have somewhat leveled out. So Jason, are you saying avoid all RAM in 2026? Well, it's pretty hard to build a PC without RAM. So that just isn't realistic, but it is time to reassess how much RAM you actually need. For a long time, 16 gigabytes was absolutely fine for gaming, but because RAM prices crashed to their lowest levels pretty much ever between 2023 and mid 2025, it just became so easy to recommend at least getting 32 gigabytes of RAM. And you could do so for just about $50 for DDR4 and only about 90 bucks for DDR5. And many gamers just started spending even more for 64 gigabytes of RAM, even though they're never gonna see the benefit. Right now, 64 gigabyte kits, they cost upward of $800. That's as much as an RTX 5070 Ti GPU. So at least during the RAM crisis, it's time to only get the RAM that you actually need rather than sacrificing more important components like getting a weaker graphics card or CPU. And yes, you might have to close one of your 100 Chrome tabs, but that's the world we live in in 2026. So for gamers on a budget, I recommend considering getting 16 gigabytes of RAM as a starting place. That's as long as you have a GPU, of course, with more than eight gigabytes of VRAM, which again is something I strongly recommend in 2026. Those of you on a tighter budget should be looking at DDR4 systems as DDR4 is still about half the price of DDR5 for the same capacity. The only folks who might actually need 64 gigabytes are those of you who are doing professional level production like video editing or creator tasks. For you, I'd say go ahead and buy whatever memory that you actually need, even if it is an $800 64 gigabyte kit. After all, you're making money from your PC, so it's essentially a business expense that you're gonna pay off by being able to do your job. Everybody else, Drop that 64 gigabyte kit, just drop it. Right now, if you are looking for RAM, I'm still seeing quite a few RAM combos at places like Newegg. Now these are usually with like a high end motherboard. So rather than just paying a lot for the RAM, you actually get something of value in return and it does bring the RAM price back to something that feels at least a little bit more sane. Also, if you have a local micro center near you, they often have similar deals, but they are usually in store only. And if you're outside the US, I would look at your regional PC electronics retailer and see if they have something similar. I'll leave several combo deals linked down in the video description for you to check out. Now it's time for me to apologize. In our 2025 PC parts to avoid, I'm aligned the Ryzen 5500, a CPU that right now sells for just $75. I said that because it was PCIe Gen 3 only with new budget mainstream GPUs coming in the RTX 50 series and RX 9000 series, likely only using half the PCIe GPU connection, that you should avoid it because it was gonna be too big a bottleneck for newer graphics cards. Now, especially since you could still pick up the Intel i5-12400F or the Ryzen 5600 for right around $100, and they are quite a bit faster. But with the RAM crisis, many of the most affordable DDR4 CPUs like the Ryzen 5600 and i5-12400F, they've been completely bought up by system integrators who put together pre-built gaming PCs. They are also looking to go with cheaper DDR4 RAM, and as a result, they bought up most of the faster DDR4 CPUs. Except for the Ryzen 5500, which you can usually get for $75 from Newegg or Amazon. And while it is too slow for many of the newer graphics cards, it does pair quite well with an RTX 5060 Ti 16 gigabyte or RX 9060 XT 16 gigabyte at 1440p versus significantly faster CPUs. Looking at Hardware Canucks testing in 2025 of CPUs ranging from very old Intel CPUs to the 9800X 3D, with both of those GPUs at 1440p, the average FPS was not that much of a difference between the Ryzen 3600, a CPU that usually runs similarly to the Ryzen 5500, and a Ryzen 9800X 3D. So for those of you looking for an affordable gaming PC for great FPS at 1440p high settings, the Ryzen 5500 seems like an insane budget choice in 2026. I just did a stock check to this while I was filming. It does look like it may actually be selling out itself right now, but I do see that the Ryzen 3600 is available on Amazon for about the same price. And again, it's just as good and it's PCIe Gen 4. Now let's talk about a couple of terrible value CPUs that I see people buy all the time. Looking at the Amazon best-selling CPUs, I'm talking about the Ryzen 9700X and 7700X, which still currently sell for about $250 for the 7700X and $310 for the 9700X. If you look at gaming performance benchmarks, these CPUs are only barely faster than the cheaper Ryzen 9600X, currently about $190, or the Ryzen 7600X at $180. Not to mention the Ryzen 7500F, 
which if you can get it, it's usually about $160 US. That's a ton of money to spend for two extra cores and not a lot more FPS. What I particularly don't understand with the 9700X is why you didn't just find an extra $60 to $100 and grab the Ryzen 7800X 3D, which is substantially better gaming CPU and it sells eight cores. People will often defend these choices with some vague promises of future proofing, but if you look at every generation of Ryzen CPUs, going back to the 2000 series, the eight core CPU does not do any better than the six core CPU. So we've never seen any advantage. Meanwhile, an extra $150 can mean the difference between getting an RTX 5070 and an RX 9070 XT 16 gigabyte. That's massive. So here's my advice. Gamers should stick with a Ryzen 5 CPU from either the Ryzen 9000 or 7000 series, skip the 8000 series. And if you have a big enough GPU and you wanna go up in CPU power, grab the 7800X 3D and also pay for your RAM. But stop buying this CPU. Let's talk about SSDs to avoid in 2026. Remember when I said AI data center expansion was eating all the RAM and SSDs? SSD prices have more than doubled on a per terabyte basis from about $60 per terabyte to over $120 on average at the time of filming. And I do expect those prices are gonna continue to increase. And the crazy thing is that testing has repeatedly shown there is no gaming difference between the fastest PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSD, and even a SATA SSD in FPS. Even in loading times, we're talking about one to two seconds at most. Despite this, looking at the best-selling SSDs on Amazon, the top 12, it's littered with high-end drives by Western Digital and Samsung. Three of the top 12 are ridiculously expensive PCIe Gen 5 NVMe SSDs. Also, rip crucial, whose drives fill out the other three spots. In fact, this entire SSD bestseller list, it's the clearest evidence that marketing and brand ID drive more purchasing decisions than value and performance. Don't be like these people, especially as SSD prices go up. Focus on getting the best value for your dollar. NVMe SSDs, they've come a long way in the past decade. The truth is that for most home users, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between a DRAM-less budget NVMe SSD and a PCIe Gen 5 capable Samsung 9100 Pro with DRAM. Yes, when you do finally decide to do a massive file copy that one time, it might take just a minute longer. Just go take a bathroom break or get a glass of water and save yourself a ton of money that you're gonna need to spend on your RAM anyway. Another terrible storage mistake that so many make is having multiple drives when one drive would do just fine. This myth that you need a separate boot and program drive, it comes from the early days of SSDs, but it just won't die. Not only were SSDs super expensive back then, but they were also quite slow compared to even budget NVMe SSDs today. It was popular to pair a smaller boot SSD, sometimes as small as 128 gigabytes, with a cheaper hard drive that you stored everything else on. Despite the fact that today's SSDs are way cheaper and way faster, the myth of needing a separate boot drive and storage drive persists. But Jason, what's the big deal of having more than one drive? The issue here is that two and four terabyte NVMe SSDs are just much cheaper on a per terabyte basis than one terabyte NVMe SSDs. Check out this Western Digital SN7100 one terabyte NVMe SSD on sale right now for $120. Yes, it's a great deal. If you bought two of these, one for a boot drive, one for a program drive, that would be $240. But you can get a two terabyte version for $30 less, just $210. And the four terabyte version is just $390. $90 less than buying four one terabyte models and even $30 less than buying two of the two terabyte drives. So don't let this old storage myth cost you money, especially with the prices of SSDs these days. So what did you think? What specific PC parts should people avoid in 2026? Yes, obviously RAM, that's a super obvious one, but what else did we miss? Let me know down in the comments. If you got value out of this video, please give it a like, and of course subscribe for more cool PC content, including our latest monthly look at the CPU and GPU prices in 2026 right here. We do this every month to help you get the latest device on the best CPU and GPU to buy in 2026. Check it out and we'll catch you on the next one.